And I hope things are going uh, well for you today. I also hope that you are as excited as I am about the opportunity to gather together on June 21st for the first time in a long, long time. I, I can't wait to, to see you all to worship together, to hear God's word together, just to, to talk to you and see how you're doing and what's been happening in your life. In, in short, really, I can't wait to be back in community with you very, very soon. I'm, I'm excited about that for sure. Certainly excitement is, is one emotion I've been feeling. These last few weeks though, I'm sure if you're like me, you've been feeling a lot of different emotions as you've been watching what's been happening in our society, in our culture. You know, the, the death of George Floyd was, it's had an impact, hasn't it, on our country. His death has caused anger, and frustration that it's kind of had those things boil to the to the forefront, come to the forefront of our society. The protests that have occurred demanding justice have have been good in many ways, and then they've, they've caused certainly they've given people an opportunity to to riot and loot and and just vent frustration as well. You know the the entire situation really has been for me just tragic and very emotive, right? I know that as I watched the video and as I heard the story of not just his death, but his life, I was angry. His, his life was taken really for no reason. It's inexcusable. There's no way to defend it. Having said that, I, I feel like I also need to say that I've got police officers that I know and, and they they risk their lives really every day to protect us and to serve us. And, and I'm proud to call them friends. But that truth doesn't invalidate the truth that George Floyd should not have died. He shouldn't have been killed. You know, like many of you, I have asked these last couple of weeks, so, so what can I do about it? Should I do anything? You know, I've listened to several uh, Christian and Missionary Alliance, uh, African-American believers and, and pastors. And that's been really helpful for me as I've listened to their stories and I've listened to their suggestions. One pastor in particular uh, has, has, has done a great job of, of giving several suggestions as to what we could do, what I could do as a, as a white believer, as a white pastor. I want to just share two of those suggestions with you and how they've impacted my life. The first thing he said really is just, just sit in pain with those who sit in pain. Just be with them. And, and if you can't be with them, just be in the midst of their pain with them. Don't, don't offer suggestions. Don't try to see the, the good side perhaps of what might come out of this. Just simply sit in pain. And, and as I've learned more about George Floyd and again his life and his death, and I, I have just sat in pain at the loss of this life. The second thing that this Black Alliance pastor said, which I know that it, it's gone around the internet, lots of people have talked about it, this idea of listening and learning, listening and being educated, not listening to refute, but listen, listening to learn. And, and I've, I've really tried to do that. I've had opportunities to do that, to, to listen to several, again, black and brown Christians and, and Alliance pastors. I've listened to their stories. I've listened to their pain. And, and, and I've learned a lot through that. And I want to continue to do that, to, to listen and to learn. As I thought about listening to these folks, I, I've also realized, and it's very clear, very obvious, that we're also supposed to listen and learn from the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I've tried to do a lot of that these last couple of weeks as I've looked at God's Word and just ask Him to speak to me uh, about what He wants in, in my life to be different. And, and this theme of justice, it, it's so clear throughout the Old and New Testaments, but it's, it's really uh, impacted me these last couple of weeks. And, and I know that probably if you're like me, you've heard a lot of these verses about justice these last couple of weeks, but I want to share a couple of these verses with you 
um, that, that God has used to, to impact me. Micah 6, 8, right? Very clear. He says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. And then Psalm 35 says, The Lord loves righteousness and justice. Isaiah 30 says, The Lord is a God of justice. And then in in Luke, Jesus tells the parable of a, a woman who demands justice over and over again. She keeps coming to a judge who's an unrighteous judge. And he says in the end, he'll give her justice. But, but then at the end of the parable, he says this very importantly. He says, and will God not bring justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. That parable and Jesus teaching is found in Luke chapter 18. And these verses, along with many others, make clear that God is a God of justice. And because of that, we need to speak out for justice. We also need to act justly. We also need to pray diligently and continually for justice in our country and in our neighborhoods as well. You know, I've heard the stories of, again, several Alliance Black pastors and believers these last two weeks, and and I've sought the Lord, I've prayed, I've read His Word, and I've been convicted by the Holy Spirit of some things that that needed change in my life, that I needed to confess to the Lord. I needed to repent of my, really, my lack of anger at times over injustice. Uh, my lack of speaking out against that. And I've asked the Lord to bring about changes in my life so that I'm no longer silent and that I feel anger when it's appropriate in the face of injustice. You know, even as I say those words, though, and I I tell you what God has done in my life, I want you to know that I I have no idea what he desires to do in your life. Uh, I want to make clear that I am not calling you to action in any way. I'm simply sharing what God has done in my life to call me to action. It may be that you need to, you need to make some changes in your attitudes, in your thoughts. You may have to ask God to help you with that. But it may be that you don't need to make any change whatsoever in this area in your life. I don't know. What I want to encourage you to do is, is what David did in, in Psalm 139 when he, he prays and says, Lord, Show me if there is any offensive way in me. And what a great prayer. We're to simply ask, Lord, is there something in my life that is offensive to you? Really, that is sin that you want to point out to me, that you want me to change, that you want to change in me. You want to make different. You want transformation to take place. And then if he does point that out to us, we just humbly ask him to bring about that transformation and change in our lives. As I've done that, I've been praying for you as well, that you would do that in the areas that God wants you to. You would be open to the change, and then you'd ask him to bring about that change so that we can be together, the men and women that God is calling us to be, in our community, in and around Butler. My prayer really this week and for the next couple of weeks is that as we come together on June 21st, man, we can worship him. We can hear his word proclaimed. We can encourage one another and we can be transformed by him to be a light that shines even more brightly in our community. That's my desire, certainly for us, for for me, rather, and for you, for us together as a community. Thank you for listening, spending a few minutes with me today. And may God bless you this day. And I look forward so much to seeing you soon. Thanks.